Welcome back to Troubleshoot Light Tech. My name is Jim Jansen, and we're continuing our video training series on smart licensing for the Cisco Meeting Server. If you recall from our last video, we went to the Cisco Meeting Manager and demonstrated how we can register our call bridges to the Cisco Smart Software Manager in the cloud. We also demonstrated troubleshooting techniques when registrations do not go as planned. Today, we're going to demonstrate how to apply smart licensing so that we can be in compliance with Cisco. So let's go and troubleshoot like tech. We're back in our browser. We still have meeting management open, Cisco Meeting Server, and Cisco Software Central. When we look at meeting management overview page, we see we have no system notifications at this time. We do look at license status and smart licensing for meetings, recording, and customization, and they all show unlicensed. So I'm going to go down to settings, to licensing, and I'm re-verifying that the call bridge, registration, and authorization are still in force, which they show right now. And I want to go ahead and try to apply some licensing to this meeting management. If I go back to overview, I can always use the smart licensing link that gets me to the licensing page. Or I can go down here to the smart licensing uh, link right here. I will navigate over to licenses. And I'm going to look at my meetings, recording, and customization license. And I note that they all show unlicensed. I also see that the enforcement days is 90 days. After 90 days, Cisco will start enforcing license policy against this meetings management server as per the release notes. So I want to allocate some meeting licenses. I click on my edit button. And I see shared multi-party and personal multi-party licenses that I can allocate. I'm going to give myself 20 shared multi-party licenses and 20 personal multi-party licenses for this server to manage. And I'm going to click Save. Now we have a save success for the multi-party licensing. We now see that we're in compliance. We have allocated 20 shared multi-party and 20 personal multi-party licenses. You can see I've been testing with my uh, shared multi-party and personal multi-party licenses over the last 90 days and you can see what my peak usage was for each type of license. Now I want to go ahead and give myself some recording licenses. I click edit and I give myself one license for recording. So this is an unexpected error. Cisco Smart Software Server cannot be contacted at this time, try again later. This usually means that there's something wrong with my registration or authorization. So I'm going to try one more time and see what's going on. So it's still not working. Let's go do some troubleshooting like we did in our previous video for transport, DNS, and that kind of thing. I go back to my settings and my licensing because registration and authorization are required for licensing to be implemented. And I notice that license authorization shows me unauthorized. If I click here, I see the same kind of message. What we can do for troubleshooting is try to reauthorize. So let's renew the reauthorization. Okay, I'm reauthorized now. There must be something going on in the transport from my proxy server since I intermittently have been losing authorizations. So if I go back to my licensing page here, I can go back to recording again, and I can allocate the one recorder license to the server, and let's see what happens now. Still having issues. Let's see what's going on with that proxy. My proxy setting is correct. My port numbers are correct. So this has got to be a transport issue on the proxy server side. 
I updated my proxy again. I'm going to try to register again and authorize. So back on my licensing page, give myself a recorder. I'm going to pause the video at this time and try to find out what's going on with my proxy server. So I'll see you on the other side. So after troubleshooting some time, I saw some DNS issues where my forwarder from my DNS server was not working all the time. So I changed my DNS servers to another setting in networking and then tried to reallocate uh, my licensing, but that still didn't work. So I went to the Cisco Software Central and there were some kind of issues with the token. So I deregistered Cisco Meeting Management, grabbed a new token, reapplied it and now I'm going to go ahead and attempt to apply my recorder license again. We'll see how that works. I have another save success from my recording license now. Now my recording and streaming is in compliance with Cisco policy. The last thing I want to do is do customization. You either have a customization license or you do not. There's not an allocated number of them. So you say yes and save. I have another success. Now when I look at my license, I see meeting, recording, and customization are now all in compliance. As you noticed before, I had a 90-day peak of one shared multi-party and six personal multi-party licenses during my testing. You note right here that the start trial is gone now since I'm fully compliant with Cisco licensing. Now we go down here, we have a little utilization chart that we can look at and we can adjust the time period that we want to look at our licensing. We can apply our filter for personal multi-party and just see what utilization we have for personal um, licensing. We can add shared licensing to the chart or remove personal. We can also see what our recording levels have been and we can add all three of them and we can see everything as we are utilizing. So this is a helpful graph. We also have a 90 day report that we can also download. Now that we're in compliance, how do we get the shared multi-party and personal multi-party licenses assigned to certain users in certain rooms? Well, that's the next step. So let's go and find out how we can do that. Okay, so how do we apply SMP licenses to rooms and PMP licenses to users' spaces? Well, according to Cisco documentation, there's a profile called User Profile. This defines whether a user has a PMP license assigned to it. The attribute has license true means that this person has a PMP license. If the attribute has license equals false, that means he has an SMP license. So if we go over to CMS, our first inclination is to go to the API and create one of these user profiles. So if I go down to User Profiles, I can create one, it looks like. And see the has license attribute. I want to set it to true because I want to assign PMP licenses to my users. And I go ahead and I create it. And I say I have a profile now that has true assigned to the has license. So I go to the API again and I go down to my users because that's where I have to assign my PMP licenses is to my users. And I click on there. I see my predefined users, which I used at LDAP Sync to bring them into CMS but I don't see any way to apply the user profile. So there must be something more to this than just assigning the user profile in CMS, and there is. So I'm gonna go back to the API for a moment, and I'm gonna go ahead into that user profile and choose to delete that, because that's not helping me at all. So what's the documentation say about this? Let's go see what the documentation says. Back in the documentation, we see that we're required to have LDAP servers, LDAP mappings, and LDAP sources. At least one of each has to be defined in order to assign a PMP license to a subset of users. And I've already predefined earlier a subset of users that I'm going to assign my PMP licenses to. But you know what? I also want to assign a subset of users for SMP. Those are going to be rooms that nobody really owns or logs into. They just get dialed into for certain purposes. So I'm going to go to the API according to the documentation. I already have created a 
LDAP server. And I'm, what I need to do now for another subset is to go to the LDAP mappings. So this is the LDAP mapping that brought in those first set of users. I'm going to create a second mapping and give them a JID and a name, a CDR tag that I can track them. I'm going to do the user part. Then I'm going to give them a special regex where I'm going to take the phone number and convert it into a usable number we can dial into these meeting spaces. I'll give it a name, and that's enough. Now that I got my mappings, I gotta create a source for the sync. I go down to the LDAP sources, and I'm gonna create a new source. And I see that I'm gonna choose my same LDAP server, and then I'm gonna choose a mapping. The earlier mapping was used to import those subset of users for PMP. This is the one I'm gonna use for the SMP. Then I'm gonna choose a base DN. My base DN for the PMP license users fell into this OU. I'm going to choose the Heroes OU for my SMP license users. And I'm going to give it a generic filter that's going to give me persons and users, but I'm excluding things like the admin account. And then I'm going to set this to true and then create. Now that I have a source, I can do a sync. I'm going to go down to my LDAP syncs. I'm going to create a new sync. And I'm going to choose my source. And my source is going to be the heroes, not the CMS, because I already have CMS heroes imported. And I'm going to set remove this when I'm done. And I see it's in progress. So if I go over to configuration and spaces, I now see I have new rooms here, VMR rooms, that I can dial into with a special number 88901 to get to the all hands meeting. So maybe you have a meeting time for all your company employees that will want to join a video conference. You would say, hey, dial the 889001 on your device and get routed into that video conference. Or you can use the UI portion of that conference. So now we have VMRs. And we have users, regular users. We got our regular users and VMRs. Now I want to assign some licensing to each one of these. And this is accomplished back in meeting management. So we go to the servers and we go into setup provisioning. And in setup provisioning, we're going to do import users. Under import users, you see I already defined some base DNs. One was the CMS Heroes, which I saw earlier, and one for Heroes. If I look at that, we choose the domain. We choose a base DN for CMS Heroes. I have my generic filter. I have a SAM account login mapping field and a, a name of the uh, space. But you notice this new box down here. We say assign personal multi-party plus license to imported users. Since the subset of users for CMS Heroes are my co-spaces and users, I want to go ahead and apply those licenses to those guys. So I'll click Done. And for the same reason, I'm going to go to the Heroes and configure the same thing. Except this time, I'm not going to check this box right down here because I want them just to be regular SMP licensed users. I'm done. Now I have a review to make. I review to make sure everything I created was correct. And I commit the change. And I say yes. Then I want to go over to my run LDAP sync. And there's only one server. If you have multiple servers, you can drop down and choose which one you want to perform the operation on. So I'm going to sync it now. And I say yes, I want to sync. And that sync was successful. So I go back to CMS. And I want to go back to that API again. Remember earlier, we tried to look under user profiles to see what was going under user profiles because we thought, well, we'll just create one. Well, now we see two new user profiles since we had performed a sync. And we look at the first profile, and the first profile says, has license false. Since the false is indicated here under this parameter, I'm assuming that this is going to be the SMP profile for those spaces and users. 
So if I go down here to my users, and I look at my all hands meeting because we know that's a VMR, that's going to get SMP assigned to it, and I click on it, now I see that there's a user profile assigned to it, as there was not one before. And if I click on that profile, that goes to the one that has false. If I go back to my list again, and I look at my users, and let's look at Vader. He's got a code space that he can log into and invite people to his meeting space. And he has a different user profile. If I click on that, has license equals true means he has a PMP license assigned to it. And let's recall that anytime a person has a PMP license in use, whether he's in a meeting or not, it's counted against meeting management's licensing. If we go back here, we're not going to see much change in the allocation of licensing for PMP and SMP because people have not been using it. And we would see that change on this page right here and on the graph. So back in our documentation, we see we can also assign PMP licenses to the system profile level where everybody under the CMS server will get assigned a license if we have enough provisioned. Or we can choose to assign it to a tenant setting where PMP licenses are assigned per tenant. So that's how we apply our SMP and PMP licenses to the CMS and CMM servers. So I hope this was informative for you. And if you enjoy our channel, come subscribe to LikeTech.